The Apostle Paul described this generation saying that perilous times will come, and they have come, and they are evil and they are dangerous. Perilous means dangerous. This is a dangerous generation in which we're living, and nobody can deny that. Evil has escalated like never before. Violence, you know, wickedness, rebellion, anarchy, wars, disasters, all of these evil things that are transpiring today have escalated like never before. In fact, Jesus said that he's coming back in the days of Noah. He described the conditions of the earth at the time of his coming as the days of Noah. And we know what the days of Noah were in Genesis chapter 6. It describes the final generation. Genesis 6 verse 5, let me read it to you. And God saw that the wickedness of man, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, listen to this, was only evil continually. Every th imagination, every scheme, every thought, all of the things that men at that time were planning and plotting and thinking of were only evil continually, only evil. So there was no goodness, there was no righteousness, there was no truth, there was no joy, there was no purpose. Everything was just evil continually. And that is why I entitled this video, When It Seems Like Evil Is Advancing. When it seems like evil is advancing. The Bible says that men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. And it's true. It's true. It seems like, you know, things are done in the darkness. Evil things, wicked things, violent things, you know, immoral things, ungodly things. And the latest news now to come out all over the internet, all over YouTube, is the uh, allegations of P. Diddy and his freak-off uh, parties, whatever that means, whatever that's about. But, you know, the allegations are all there, all the all the evil, all the sexual things that took place, all of the wickedness, the darkness that took place. Those are the allegations that are coming out. And those, those describe the days of Noah, uh, continual evil. Now, I want to give you a foundational truth, and this is simply it. Evil cannot win. Hallelujah. Evil will never win. Glory to God. It may look like it's got the upper hand. It may look like it's uh, advancing and continuing and spreading and all of that. But evil will never continue. Hallelujah. Evil cannot win. Glory to God. It can't. Now, Jesus said this. He gave us an unfailing promise in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. This is what Jesus said. He said, upon this rock, that rock is the testimony of the church that Christ is, is God, that there's no other name among men, given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved by the name of Jesus. That's our testimony, right? So upon this rock, that's our testimony. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the evil of hell, the darkness of hell, will not prevail against it. So it doesn't matter how how much it, 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 you know, brings its ugly head to the surface. It doesn't matter how much it, you know, clenches its fist in the face of God. It doesn't matter how much it promotes and embraces wickedness today as we are doing in our society and in our culture like never before. We are now embracing, we are now calling good what God calls evil, what God calls abomination, we are calling good in our society today, in our culture today. Why is that? Because men love darkness more than light. In fact, Isaiah says that in the last days, we will call evil good and good evil. And so Jesus said, I'm going to build my, my, my church. It's his church, hallelujah. And then he also went on to say in Matthew 16, verse 19, he said, and I will give you, who the church, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Glory to God. That means authority. Come on. That means authority. Keys represent authority. 
powerful, strong, great, high authority in the kingdom of God. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we have the authority to bind the evil and the darkness, and we have the authority to loose the goodness and the light. Glory to God. And so the reality is that many who perhaps call themselves Christians are not necessarily Christians. That goes without saying. That goes without mention. We all know that. All kinds of people say, oh, yes, I'm a Christian. Oh, yes, I was born into a Christian family. Oh, yes, I go to church. Oh, yes, I was, uh, you know, I had communion, you know, when I was a, when I was a child or, or I was baptized as a baby. Yes, I'm a Christian. No. No, not, those are just some, you know, examples, but there's even more than that. There's even people that go to church and they prophesy and they worship and, and they pray and they declare and they do all of these things like Christians do. And yet they're not even Christians by name. They are by relationship. They are not, they do not have a transformed nature. They've never received Christ as their Lord and Savior. They've never repented of their sin. They've never come to Christ in a surrendered manner. But they call themselves Christians. Many of them are celebrity Christians. And just Jesus said this. He said in Matthew chapter 7, many on that day, when we stand before Christ, he said, many on that day will say, Lord, Lord. We cast out devils in your name. We prophesied in your name. We did miracles in your name. Sounds pretty convincing to me. Yep, yep, these are true believers. Yep, these are powerful, anointed men and women of God. They've got the power. They're spiritual. And yet Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. And so, you know, we can't be alarmed by, by the evil that, is, that seems to be advancing in our generation. This is the devil's last shot, so to speak. This is the devil's last blast, right, to take as many out as he can. He knows his time is up. He knows his time is short. He knows what's coming. And, and he knows that the church is going to rise up in these last days and bring revival and bring many to the Lord. So he's just, you know, this is his last fling. You know, he's, he's, he's like a wild animal, a scared animal trapped in a corner, and he's just going to pounce one last time. That's what's happening today. That's why evil seems to be advancing. It's like there's been an unleashing of demonic entities. Demonic powers have been unleashed from the pit of hell. And so we're seeing all of these evil demonstrations of demonic power, darkness, such wickedness as it was in the days of Noah. Jesus said that. So that tells me that, you know what, look up, look up, church, because your redemption is drawing near. You can see that by, by the intensity of evil, but evil is not advancing. It cannot advance it cannot win. It cannot overcome the church. Glory to God. We overcome. We are not overcome. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. We are not defeated. We are more than conquerors, the Bible says. We, those who are the true church of Jesus Christ, those who are true servants of God, true sons and daughters of God, true laborers for Christ in the kingdom. We cannot be overcome. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said this, he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, not by saying, Lord, Lord, not by supposedly doing miracles, not by supposedly prophesying, not by supposedly uh, casting out devils, all of those things. No, he said, by this shall all men know that you are my true, genuine, 100% disciples by the love that you have one towards another. By love, by love, love conquers all sin. It does, love overcomes all sin, glory to God. And so how do we win this battle against evil that is prevalent in our society today? How do we win? Well, four words, and it's found in Romans 12, 21, four words. 
We overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. That's a very simple but a very powerful prescription for you and I to overcome the darkness, the evil, the wickedness, the ungodliness, the iniquity that is, that is in our face, right in our face today in this last generation, this culture of sin. Overcome evil, hallelujah, how? With good. Doesn't sound very powerful, doesn't sound very effective, but that's what the Bible tells us to do. Glory to God. We have the power to overcome evil, listen to this, with the anointing. We have the power to overcome evil with the anointing. That is why you should pray every morning as David as David prayed, Lord, anoint me with fresh oil. Fresh oil, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anoint me this day. Lord, anoint me to do good, to do good in all that I that all that I am involved in this day. Let me do good. That's what David prayed in Psalm 23. Didn't he? He said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, David was saying this, Lord, goodness is following me. In other words, I'm going to leave a trail of goodness behind me for all to see and to receive. That is what our life should be all about, church. Leaving a trail of goodness, not evil, not hypocrisy, not wickedness, None of those things, but a trail of goodness, the goodness of God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anoint us with fresh oil, God, again today. Pray that every morning. I prayed it this morning because that's my heart's desire. And so Isaiah 10 verse 27 tells us this, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You have an anointing of the Holy Ghost, and that anointing is powerful to overcome and destroy the yoke, the devil's yoke that have captured many, many souls, many people today. They're held by the yoke of the devil. And we have the anointing to, to destroy that yoke, to loose them from it, glory to God. Whatever we loose on earth, we can loose the yoke from off of captive souls and set them free, hallelujah. How? By the anointing. Listen to this, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I love this. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. You have been anointed by God with the Holy Ghost and with power. And Jesus went about, listen to this, doing good. He was anointed to do good. We overcome evil by good. We overcome evil. Jesus overcame evil with good. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, destroying the yoke. Why? For God was with him. And so we overcome evil with good. And let me leave you with this last truth. And that is this. As I've already mentioned, evil shall not continue. Evil shall not conquer. Evil cannot win. But the church, the true church of Jesus Christ, not only wins, but has already won. We have the anointing. We have the power. We have the authority, glory to God, to loose those things here on earth, and they will be loosed in heaven. To bind those things here on earth, and they will be bound in heaven. You have that authority. And so we go about doing good, as Jesus did. Let's leave a trail of goodness behind us in all that we do, hallelujah, so that men will see our good works and glorify God in heaven, and they will know that we are his by our love. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for that truth, God. Thank you. Oh, God, there's so much, so much truth today that sets us free, so much truth that keeps us in that mindset of authority and victory and conquering, glory to God. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Lord, I pray, God, today for every viewer on this channel watching this video, God, I pray that they would rise up. I pray that they would go about doing good as Christ did and setting people free, all who were oppressed by the devil. How? By the anointing, by doing good, 
by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord, by prayer, God, by, by good works, Lord, by, by, by your Spirit, and not by ourselves, O oh God, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. That is how we overcome, hallelujah. We overcome by doing good. And so, Lord, I pray, God, today that this simple message will have a profound impact upon us. God, as we are facing evil and darkness and wickedness like never before, but God, let us always remember and let us always declare that evil cannot prevail, that evil cannot continue, hallelujah, that evil cannot, Lord, uh, uh, increase, God. We declare that today, Jesus. We bind the evil works of the enemy. We bind the spiritual darkness, God, that is clouding uh, many, many minds, God, with wickedness, as it was in the days of Noah. God, we release them, Father God, Lord, to the, to the power of the Holy Spirit. We release them to the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. We release them, O oh God, to the transforming power of your word, we pray today. God, whether it be family members, whether it be friends or neighbors, or, or work associates, or people that we meet in the coffee shops, God, let us do good, I pray. Let us do good, O oh God, and overcome the evil, hallelujah, for the devil cannot overcome good. But we overcome the devil by goodness. Glory to God. Thank you for that, Father God. Let us not be alarmed. Let us not be distracted. Let us not be overwhelmed by what we see breaking out in the daily reports, God, of the wickedness that is all around us, God. It's like all around us. We are surrounded by wickedness. But God, we are not defeated. We are more than conquerors today. So God, let us rise up and let us declare and pray and prophesy and do miracles, genuine miracles, and good works in your mighty name we pray so that others would come to Christ by our goodness in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you and bye-bye for now.